My name is Harriet Wittink and I want to tell you about pain phenotypes in personalized medicine. Chronic musculoskeletal pain is on the rise. As the population gets older, we see an increase in musculoskeletal pain. It is very costly, a very big problem. And to date, the effect sizes from randomized controlled trials that have been conducted are small. That may be because of patient heterogeneity. So it may be worthwhile to look for subgrouping and to see if that leads us to better treatment results. One way to get to subgroups is classifying on prognostic factors. Prognostic factors are often considered better predictors of outcome than diagnoses because while diagnoses focus on identifying and classifying a specific disease or condition, prognostic factors go beyond that and consider various factors, often specific to the individual, that can influence the progression, response to treatment and overall prognosis of the disease. And I want to show you several studies who have made an attempt to subgroup patients. In this study, 435 patients who were seeking treatment for non-specific complaints in the neck, shoulder, low back or multi-site pain were seen in primary health care physiotherapy in Norway. They used latent class analysis to identify phenotypes based on 11 common prognostic factors within four biocycle domains. Pain, beliefs in thoughts, psychological and activity and lifestyle. And here you can see the five phenotypes they ended up with, with on the left phenotype one and on the right phenotype five. And you can see that these symptoms increase per phenotype. In pain intensity, the number of pain sites, the percentage of people who have continuous pain, and the percentage of people who have a pain duration longer than 12 months. So we have a subgrouping here who clearly differentiates the groups from each other. You can show this quite clearly. You can also depict these, these different phenotypes in a kind of spiderweb diagram, as you can see here. Here's the different colors of the different phenotypes, with blue being the least affected group of patients, followed by orange, green, yellow, and the purple line being the most severely afflicted group. You can also see that this is across the pain intensity, continuous pain, pain sites, pain duration, recovery expectations, pain self-efficacy, fear avoidance, mental distress, sleep problems, workability, and daily activity level. You can see, for instance, that phenotype three has a high burden on fear avoidance, which gives us an excellent starting point to start therapy with. In contrast, um, the blue group has high pain duration, um, and high recovery expectations, but it scores high on sleep problems, so maybe their sleep needs to be addressed. In the middle is the black line, the average of the five groups, which is not nearly as informative as the five phenotypes. In another study, 147 patients with neck, back, shoulder, or complex pain were measured in primary health and physiotherapy. They collected a lot of data over time and then described recovery trajectories separately for a traditional diagnostic musculoskeletal groups based on pain location and the same patient groups categorized in phenotypes groups based on prognostic factors. And what you can see here is on the left, they use um, the diagnostic groups across the uh, patient-specific functional score and pain. And on the right, they use the phenotypes. And you can clearly see these phenotypes differentiate better from each other than the diagnostic groups. So it seems like they, the phenotyping helps us understand better what happens with patients over treatment course. Yet another study 411 patients with chronic pain of different origins were followed and they all had severe physical and psychosocial consequences of their pain 
and were undergoing multimodal pain treatment. A number of self-reported measures of pain uh, were used, including emotional distress and physical health, and they describe four different phenotypes. In this table, you can see the Z-score. The Z-score is the mean of all patients together, and a deviation from the, the, the Z-score or Z-score means a standard deviation uh, from the mean. So you can see here that class one is high pain burden. They, they score above average pain, um, but they do kind of all right on sensory pain perception, effective pain perception, and depression and anxiety. So they score higher on than average on pain, but average on distress. Whereas the extreme pain burden scores very high on pain variables, pain intensity, pain impairment, uh, and they score high on distress. Whereas the low pain burden scores well be below the mean of the group and scores about average on uh, distress, sl actually slightly lower on distress. And then they looked at outcomes of this, these various groups and they found that outcomes differ per group as well. Whereas the high pain burden and medium emotional distress, people were responding quite well with decreases in pain intensity and depression. The extreme pain burden and ex emotional distress, the, the group that was highest in the table, had no improvement in pain and almost and a slight improvement in depression. So phenotyping helps you predict outcomes and um, of course we need more research, but I think it's a nice way forward for us to look forward to in the future.